Rate laws can be converted into equations that give the concentrations of substances at any time during the course of a reaction. If you have a first order reaction, then the rate law will have this form. You write the word rate, you put an equal sign, you write a lowercase k for the rate constant, and then you'll have the concentration of one reactant raised to the first power. To find the reaction concentrations over time, you're going to use that equation, or an equivalent expression, which I prefer, which is shown on the right in yellow. K times T is equal to the natural log of concentration of A naught divided by concentration of A sub T. The naught here indicates the initial concentration. That is, you can think of it as the concentration at time zero, because it looks kind of like a zero. The A sub T is the concentration at some later time, T. Could be 35 seconds from now, could be 118 seconds from now, but A sub T is the concentration at a later time. If you have a gaseous system, instead of putting concentrations in this equation, you could put partial pressures. Often, graphs of these are produced, and if you plot the natural log of the concentration of your reactant at any given time versus time, you're going to get a straight line. It'll have a certain slope. So let's see if we can figure out that slope based on this equation that's on the left here, not the one in yellow. You should know that whenever you plot something versus time, time is on the x-axis and the other thing is on the y-axis. In this equation right here, not the one in yellow, the left side is y, the time is x. Wait a minute, I think this looks familiar. This thing is the y-intercept and that means that the slope is equal to the opposite of the rate constant. So if you plot this and you find the slope and it will come out negative, throw the negative sign away and whatever number that is, that's the value of the rate constant. Let's try an example. If this is a first order process and there's your rate constant, you've got the initial pressure of the reactant is 256 torr. Find the partial pressure of that same reactant after 36 and a half minutes. For gases, pressure is proportional to moles and also to concentration, so where that equation is given, I'm going to go ahead and change it to pressures, which you can do if you have a gaseous system. So let's put in what we know here. The left side of this equation is equal to K times T. The rate constant K is given. Notice that I've changed 36.5 minutes into seconds so that the units of my rate constant will match the unit on time. That's the left side of the equation. The right side is the natural log of the original pressure, that is the pressure at time zero, which is 256, divided by the pressure at this later time, which we don't know. So now we simply have to solve this for P sub T. The left side is simply a number, carry the right side down. How do we get rid of that natural log? The way I say it, you take e to the both sides. In other words, e to the 1.4892 power gives you 4.4335, and if you take e to the right side, the e and the natural log whoosh, magically disappear and you end up with 256 over pt which you can then very easily solve for PT to be 57.7 torr. Let's talk about half-life. It's symbolized T sub 1 half, and it is the time required for a reactant's concentration to drop to 1 half of its original value. For first order reactions, if you take the rate constant multiplied by the half-life, you will get this number, 0.693, which is actually the natural log of 2. For first order reactions, 
the half-life is independent of the initial concentration. So if we start with 6 molar, or if we start with 1 molar, or 0.25 molar, that doesn't affect the half-life. And in a first-order reaction, the concentration of reactants is cut in half every half-life. Say we have a concentration of 8 molar, and the half-life is 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, we won't have 8 molar anymore. We'll only have 4. After another 10 minutes, we'll have half of 4, which is 2. After another 10 minutes, we'll have half of 2, which is 1 molar. After another 10 minutes, we'll have 1 half molar. After another 10 minutes, 1 fourth, and so on. Here's how we get that first order equation for half-life. If we start with that equation, by definition, after the half-life has elapsed, we only have one half of whatever it was we started with. So if we started with one, after one half-life, we'll only have half of it. And the half-life will have passed. So I put t one half in there. The right side of that is just the natural log of 2. That's how you get your half-life equation. It's derived directly from this first-order rate law equation. Let's find the half-life for the decomposition of dimethyl ether, which is what we had in the previous problem, based on data from that problem. There's the equation again. It was given at the beginning of that earlier example. The rate constant was given in the earlier example. To find the half-life, kt.693. You take the rate constant times the half-life and you get 0.693 and since the rate constant is in seconds to the minus one, the half-life that comes out of here will be in seconds. 1.0 times 10 to the third seconds, which most people would have not a real good idea of how long that is. So if we're trying to communicate this to others, maybe we should put it into some more manageable unit like minutes. Because if I say 17 minutes, most people know what that means. If we say a thousand seconds, people's eyes glass over. Let's summarize. Here we have gone over the integrated rate law for first order reactions. On a graph, you can identify a first order reaction because the vertical axis will have natural log of A or the natural log of a partial pressure and it will slope downward with the slope being equal to opposite K. So whenever you have a first order reaction, take a look at the graph on the right, it's going to look like this. The vertical axis will have natural log of some reactant concentration or the natural log of the pressure of some reactant. It will slope down and to the right. The slope of that curve will be equal to opposite k. So from this graph we can find the rate constant. And again down in the lower right there are the two equations that govern for first order reactions.